Hey everybody, this is Dance Music Kate Vinnie Michael with a brand new episode of Walk and Talk. So you see that piece of uh, concrete, that piece of concrete, where I'm standing right here, the newspaper box used to be right here, and the car box, the car magazine box used to be here. So every morning we used to, we used to come out here and get the Toronto Sun. So the Toronto Sun newsstand used to be right here. It used to be like, what, 50 cents during the week and a dollar on Sunday? We used to come over here, and their newspaper box used to be right here. And then they took it out. They put the 24, the 24 magazine there, and they got rid of it. This was in nearly like, nearly like 20 years since they got rid of all the boxes. There's, there is some Toronto Sun newspaper stands in some areas. They still got the box put out here. They got rid of it all. Such a beautiful day out here. I still love about living in the, in the Saga Hood because like, there's a lot of historic historic places and areas that we used to all chill at, go through certain malls, certain stores, and stuff like that that we can relive throughout, throughout, li throughout our life. Just want to go across the street. So remember the on last episode, this is where, where I said about the last on the last episode of Walkman Talk, I mentioned about the mailbox. So the mailbox that's there used to be over there. And then that's been gone for many years, and they put the mailbox over there. That's so you come out and get your mail. And this complex here, people used to come out from over here. Everybody used to come out from here. And like years after, they actually blocked the fence, like the the walkway, and blocked it from here for people from trespassing and going in and out. So now we're gonna go through uh, St. Charles Garden and get a little, give a little history lesson while we're walking. So St. Charles Garden was built in 1978. Before the school was constructed, um, apparently, originally, St. Pierre and Paul Church was supposed to be on where St. Charles Garden was standing. Before the school was built, St. Pierre and Paul Church was supposed to be here. But due to the fact the church doesn't have, it's uh, the, due to the fact that the church doesn't have a basement. Originally, this this was supposed to be it because, you know, this uh, the structure and everything else, it had a good perfect structure and everything. So what they decided to do is move the church from, actually move the construction site all the way to St. Peter and Paul Church. Originally, this was supposed to be the original site for the, ch for the church before St. Charles Garden was constructed. And then, so yeah, that was part of it. That's why people saying the church was supposed to be on Rathburn. This was it. Because uh, St. Charles Garden was under the St. Peter and Paul School banner. Because before St. Peter and Paul was built, a lot of the teachers that went from St. Charles Garden went to Peter and Paul were all under one school until 1985. And that's when they built the, built the, when they, as soon as the school was constructed, all the teachers that went there went over to Peter and Paul and that's when they built the bridge to keep rivalry out of there. So there's a little history lesson, ladies and gentlemen, at St. Charles Garden, before the school was constructed, St. Peter and Paul Church was supposed to be here in this area before it was constructed in 1982 over by Central Parkway. Originally, uh, St. Peter and Paul Church was at uh, Metropolitan and Canadian Martyrs. 
So by 1982, it merged. So I came to this elementary school for grade eight. Originally, I was supposed to come for grade seven, but due to the fact like I went to St. Spring Paul School, um, I was supposed to come over here for grade seven. I came here for grade eight. Uh, this school has been run down for the past like 20 years. They changed a lot with this school and apparently it has gone down real bad. And some of the teachers I went to the school has passed away just recently. Very sad. And they moved a lot of the classes and they and they the straight from what I've heard the grades seven and eight are in the porta pack. The grades three and four are in that room over there. Five and six are on the other end. Three three and four, five and six on the other end. And the rest is ancient history. And also this used to be the steps. Until they took it out in 2007. And then the soccer field. Actually that soccer net was actually been replaced. It used to be it used to be steel. Actually, no, they actually painted it. It used to be brown, now it's white. And where the garden is now, that used to be the baseball diamond. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was taken up. That was there from like the beginning of the early 80s, early 90s up until the late 2000s. And then they took out the baseball diamond. I think around, I believe the middle of tw in the 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. And they decided to build the garden. So even though they split the cost from the French school, so they can pay for this prop, pay for the garden, which is run by the community, which is funded by the community. And there's a lot of groups that go over there. They plant vegetables. And now they're supposed to pick them because those foods actually belong, uh, actually were donated from the grocery stores. So, and they actually be donated. It used to be all like a reddish color and it took it on put cream. I've seen a lot in this park. Yeah, so the steps used to be along this side here. Up until they took it out in 2007, 2008. They took the steps and they stretched it out a little bit. Pretty neat, huh? <laughs> and for what I've heard. There's a raccoon that lives underneath the porta pack. <laughs> what kind of fuck is school? Cannot afford to keep this place going, but yet your school is falling apart. Your school is falling apart. Like fuck. This is why a lot of Catholic schools are closing down. That's a lot of them are moving to Padre Pio, Metropolitan Andre, Canadian Martyrs, away from this dump. Because the porta pack is one of the hottest in St. Charles Garnier. So they changed everything all over here. They changed. And so now from what I've heard, from now from what I've heard, now the kids go in from that area and they come out this way. And you got the garden over here. So this was never here before. This used to be all when they started planting it. And that's what they constructed the new park. This old one used to be the old one was run out.
So now from the from the early episode of Walk and Talk, this I mentioned about the bridge. So the bridge was actually constructed to keep rivalry out of both schools. Yeah, the story is a hundred. It's a hundred percent accurate that this tunnel was actually built to keep the rival the rival rival schools out of each other's territory. That was the beginning of divided and conquer and kill era. So, like I said, if you know anybody, if you ever come across this this tunnel, if you're ever going by Saints Pier and Paul back in those days, you got to make sure you know somebody there. If not, most chances are you're not going to be making it there out of, out of there alive. That's how it was here back in the saga hood. <laughs> now this is all Muriel now before you used to be all fucking spray paint. Now this is a Muriel. And they actually painted it, they actually cleaned it up, except for that those fuckers right there. <laughs> There's a lot about living in Mississauga, a lot of historic places, school, elementary school, the schools that you went to and everything else. Because during those days, man, it was kill, it was pound for pound, kill for kill. It wasn't like today where you got gangs and all that shit. No, no, no. You had rep. Rep sounds more better than gang because when you had your rep, you, you have your own crew. You are your own gang, your own crew. Not like guns blazing and all that shit. No, 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 no. We had our fists. Nunchucks, baseball bats, you fucking name it. To defend ourselves, man. Unlike now. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's why today's generation will never understand what, what goes on, he, what went on here. And now we're coming up to the bridge. Okay, here's a little fact. This bridge was constructed in 2008. There was another bridge, but the original bridge I used to be here used to be over there. And they took it out in the summer of 2007 and constructed this bridge over at the creek the creek now before it used to be all polluted and now they actually can re reconstructed the path they actually put a pathway here they put some branches some trees and they actually cleaned the water the water's actually cleaned out before the fucking thing used to be all dirty that's why nobody ever came down here no more here i'll show you see because the bridge, the bridge, like I said, the bridge used to be over there until it was, until they tore it down and put it right here. So when you're coming down this side, it's like instead of coming down like an angle, like an like an S shape. See, the water is like right here. It used to be all clean. Well, and now it is all clean. out they put they plant new trees and everything else you go over here look how beautiful that is oh my god they actually did a lot they actually did a good job at cleaning this place up the water's clean now put trees and branches over here and everything else Used to be on the other side. People used to come down this area. Used to come across. Yeah, used to come across and go to here. Now it's just this side and not coming from here and all the way going towards the tunnel. And then now we're coming up to Whittington Green Park. Years back. After when the school was constructed, this park here was actually 20 years old. More because this was constructed in 2000, but way back after was the school was constructed in 1985, this park used to be wood. The swings used to be on this side before it moved over there. The slide was on another angle over there. And in 2000, they actually constructed this this new set. This set, so this set's about 23 years old. 
but the one before that was actually about from 85 to 2000. So about 85, 95, that's 10, 96, 97, 98, 90. so 15 years. Sorry, I had to calculate. <laughs> so it happens. So yeah, we used to cut a lot of, a lot of problems were solved in this neighborhood. A lot. Yeah, it used to be all wood, and then they took it out. So this park's actually 23 years old. This structure's 23 years old. You see the paint's running off. That's how old it is. Yeah, you can see the paint running off. That's how old it is. 23 years old. A 23 year old set. The soconet was a little different. You used to have poles made out of, yeah, these have pulled the poles, now they got rid of them, and place it with smaller ones, it needs to be high, not that the is low, and you got the bocce cord over there, over that side, used to be a plaque, used to be a plaque, and then there used to be steps going along, and they took it all that out to make a plaque, there for more than 23 years because they put a bunch of, they put the tether ball tether ball nets like tether, tether ball slide poles about 20 years ago 23 years ago and they got rid of it because due to um, people getting whacked with the tether ball and they got rid of it also it was a four sided four sided Sorry about seniors here in Paul's school. Apparently, this school was supposed to close down in 2006 because this school was about like 21 years old at the time, and apparently they were supposed to go back, be going back to St. Charles Garnier to, to reform a St. Charles Garnier once again after when they left uh, St. Charles Garn after when they left St. Charles Garnier to go to Peter and Paul, they were supposed to go back there, but due to the fact like they wanted to keep the school here. They decided not to close down the school, but they should have done it because like a lot of teachers left the school, a lot of programs, they got rid of a lot of the sports, a lot of the programs from the school. That's why everybody from this area now that go to the school lives on absolute and half of this area, not really in this area anymore. Well, kind of. now about 39 39 years old the school was supposed to shut down in 2006 A lot of memories here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the basketball net used to be an NBA net, and they took that, and somebody stole it and set this thing on fire. Set the dumpster on fire and stole the basketball net. That net is actually 20, 22 years old. 20 years old. 22 years old. Oh my god. I'll talk about this again. I mentioned it on my last episode. This is one of the most pathetic displays of all here because what this used to be all clean and they actually did a horrible horrible job to this to the kindergarten area there was no chalkboards back in the days there was and the way they have the slide like that looks like looks like looks like a, a tree house that caught on fire no seriously because so remember before the fence was constructed okay they everything was all in one 
there used to be a purple, the blue slide with the little house. That was there up from 1985 to 2000, and then they took it out. And what happened was the school, when the school started to go downhill and everything else, they fenced that area so, so, this, so the kids won't go back there far. And then they put the slide over here. I remember before, when me and my brother were kids, when he was going, when we were all going, we all used to play over there. And now they put the fence over here and the kids stuff like right there. Which is pathetic because why have something like this? And now, I'll, now see, why have something like that? It looks, it looks, it looks, it looks disgusting. You have trees over there, weeds and everything that should be clean. That should be clean. It's, it's pathetic. Oh my God, the kindergarten area at Saints Pier and Paul School is pathetic. It's never like this when we're going, and this used to be all chain, like all gated, not what it what it is now. Yeah, look at that. All the weeds and growing. All of it should be cut. And who put a side? I remember the side used to be right over there, right where that fence is. And they got the sign over there. I don't know what they got to put the sign for. And what they got to put the school sign over there now. Which is pathetic. But you never had that. The same Vincent Nepal had that. So now we're gonna try to hit um possibly the Enfield place. I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna show you the Enfield place. Hopefully there's some battery left. If not, we're gonna have to cut it for another day. We'll see how much the percentage on the battery. Okay, 34%. Yes, yes, yes. I love doing this project because like it brings it because I'll do like something like this when I'm at, like away from the home studio, like at home in the studio with the little family. But I like to come here and do my own story. Yes, this is part of the walk and talk series, but this is like more like history behind the saga hood and everything else. So like it's a it's a it's a, it's a walk and talk special that's basically what it is but it's part of the walk and talk series this is so this is like what this is part of uh season three so now we're coming up to so we're coming up to bishop silk park before they sold the property you see this used to be the whole entire area the whole entire park until that half of that property was sold and it turned into, into townhouses and they actually did a good job by actually put planting the trees see this is a lot better than that crap over there peter and paul yeah we're coming to bishop silk park Actually, they, they actually clean. They actually clean Bishop Soul Park pretty good, because, like I said, they actually planted the trees, they planted the, the wheat, like the trees and all that. The trees look beautiful, and that side now, where the town now is, that used to be all part of Bishop Soul Park until they sold half of that, eight, half of that land, and turned it all into townhouses. They sold the property in 2003, and they turned into townhomes in 2007. Late 2007. Yeah, they actually cleaned it up nice. Before, so they still have this property. Half, half of uh, Bishop Silk Park. And they actually extended the pathway actually this used to be a lot shorter than it was before they actually constructed it a little longer instead of being shorter 
We actually we used to come here a lot during. Actually, there was this one. Every time you used to come by here, there was this gigantic pole with the with the with the sign. I think you see. I thought it looked like a basketball net. Yeah. So they sold this property in 2003 and turned into townhomes. On the last episode, I talked about the Marilyn Monroe. Where that was setting, that used to be the Shell gas station, the property of the Shell gas station, until the property was sold in 1996. Yeah, a lot of memories here, a lot of good memories. And, you know, I wish mom was here to see this. <laughs> Central Lions Club. So this property is now owned by the Lions Club of Mississauga. This, this is for the, the farmer's market. The farmer's market used to be over at square one many, many years ago until so they started building whole, the Whole Foods Market and they decided not to do the farmer's market over there because a lot of new, it's the, the property was changing so they started developing new parts of the mall and everything else. So now the farmer's market is here now. Which is good because a lot of people can park their cars in that area over here and come up to the farmer's market and get your fruits and vegetables. So we will go this way. So let's go this way. See, Marilyn Monroe. The Marilyn Monroe buildings on that land was the Shell gas station. Until 2000, and like, and, like, until they constructed this whole entire complex in 2005. And it was, it was completed in 2007. The, just to tell us that the buildings took a while. It took a while.
Yeah, it's called Ship Place. Actually, on Ship Drive. <laughs> so, we're going across the street. So now we're coming up to CIBC. Last, last episode of Walking Talk, I mentioned about the CIBC building. It used to be Old City Hall. Yes, 100% true. Um, before the clock tower was constructed, they moved before they moved over to City Hall. This used to be the original uh, where CIBC is now standing. This used to be Old City Hall. Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is this used to be Old City Hall where CIBC was standing when May. When uh, Mary Hazel McCallion was elected, they moved over there where the clock tower is, over by the li over which is now the Mississauga Library. The Mississauga Library they started constructing in 1989. It was completed in 1991. Yeah, Old City Hall was see was now is now the CIBC building. I think it's Chez Dance. This building here used to be Northern Telecom in the early 90s. It was Northern Telecom until it became Chez Desjardins. A little after that, and, and and as I mentioned on the last episode too, that one of them was the Weather Network building. I think it was this one that used to be the Weather Network building up until they moved to Oakville. I think, I guess because of security and everything else, and like, like everything else, like safety and everything else, they decided to move the studio over, over in Oakville. So now we're coming to the CIPC building now. Yeah. Yeah. And where the Indian, the where Trim tr Tram Rin is is standing there at where I'm standing used to be Mr. Greeks. Mr. Greek was there from the early 90s up until the mid 2000s, and he turned this into an Indian restaurant, and it's been here ever since. CIBC, ladies and gentlemen, used to be Old City Hall before they move over where the clock tower is today. I'm gonna cross over here for my safety because I don't want to cross over there. I don't want to get hit. <laughs> yeah. And the Royal Bank is still here, and Dr. Bobby Brown's office is still there too. Strong, ladies and gentlemen. So we will go over to square one, kind of, not really, but we'll cut it there and we'll pick up where we left off next time. Just want to give you a brief history. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, the camera's a little shaky. My phone's a little 
little shaky, man. Holy shit. Yeah, sorry, guys. Those phones are a little shaky. My bad because of the wind. Watch, I'm right here, boys. Like, I'm right here. When I, <laughs> I know I saw that officer. I saw him. It's like, first, first, she was gonna go straight, and, and then, then she will the reverse. reverse. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> they're, they're sometimes not in their mind. No, they're not. No, especially on a day like this. <laughs> and you got your partner over there doing the traffic, too. He's, he's doing a good job. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's giving everybody a chance. To I know. Up. What happened? Your lights were out here. Yeah, the wind too. Yeah. 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 Oh, brother. Yeah, don't hit me. No. Oh, are we allowed to cross over this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, don't give me that. Thanks, guys. Police officer, man. That's what we need. Police officers like that. <laughs> I'm going to remember you guys. <laughs> I'm going to remember you guys. That's what I call respect. See? Here it is. If you've been, if it's someone like me, who's been part of the community, that's what you gotta see. Have cops like that doing a good job. Instead of these tyrannical gangsters, we need cops like those two guys here, and I commend them on that. And yes, he was doing a good job, ladies and gentlemen. All right, guys, I'm going to cut the episode here. Thanks for all for tuning in for an episode of Walk and Talk. I'll see you all next time. Have a great day, everybody.